Well, how long do we have till the next race? Two weeks. Two weeks. Let's cut your car apart. <laughs> we are getting ready to install a drop floor kit in the Miata, so Dalen's got the interior coming apart right now. Because when he sits in the car right now, his helmet sits above the roll bar, which is a problem. So this is the drop floor kit to weld into the car. So we're going to cut the floor pan out, and this is going to weld back in in place of it. And this is from 5X Racing? 5X Racing, yeah. So it looks like it's going to be a pretty straightforward install. The biggest thing is just going to be right now getting all the flammable stuff out of the inside of golf ball. Because we don't want golf call to become fireball. No. No. Okay. Just want to make sure. <laughs> so carpet's going to have to get cut out. Quite a bit of it won't be able to be reused, especially in this area, but for the class he wants to keep the car in, we got to keep as much carpet as we can. Oh, it's um, a combination of rules for Extreme Street SEC on her bike requiring a finished interior, at least an attempt at one, which um, they're not too strict on that. I mean, as long as it looks, as long as you're not like bare metal everywhere. Yeah. Um, but not that is this is still a street car too so i don't want like bare metal on the tunnel to burn myself on. <laughs> and other thing that we are going to do is figure out an intake that makes intake noises <laughs> because he had this car at the track that he's going to be at ncm a few weeks ago mm -hmm. and you hit limiter a couple times because you couldn't hear it over the corvette that was in front of you I couldn't hear the wind noise through a window, actually. Oh, even I, worse. I could barely even hear the Corvette, but <laughs> I was hearing the Corvettes more than I was hearing on the car. So we don't want to make exhaust louder for this track because NCM actually has very strict noise rules. Not as strict as AMP did. Um, but what's your yeah, decibel? AMP is like 98 decibel, lowest in the uh, NCM is 103. Yeah, which 103 is what we, that they were letting people go to. Well, I think 102 is where they started yelling at you at AMP. If you cracked 102, you were in trouble. So we're leaving the stock exhaust on for that, but we're going to try to make it so it makes some bit of noise so you can hear the car on track. But it should be pretty straightforward. Of course, it's still a stock motor, fairly low compression, still has cats on everything, so it's going to be very hard to make this break noise. We don't want to get kicked out and have to go fix the car. Yeah. That's going to take out a track time. Mm -hmm. Got our lines laid out here. So 5X has a video on their website, which actually shows you pretty well where you need to make all your cuts. So we've got one that's gonna go straight along the back of the car. We're gonna come back here. I'm gonna go flush along the floorboard here. Come up, because we're cutting this bracket out. And then straight along the front of this back up to there. So this entire section here will be gone. Now, there's a bracket that ties the rails together because there is a chassis rail running right here that we are going to cut through and have to weld the new rail back in. There's a bracket though that bolts to that. I have left that bolted in for right now so as I'm cutting this the whole thing doesn't just fall out of the car. It's going to hold it up until we're done then I'll take the bolt out and then we can lift this floor panel out of the car. But uh, I think we're at the point of no return. Dalen you ready for me to cut a giant hole in your car? Yeah, yeah this is the scary part. So yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you want to go outside? <laughs> Maybe maybe go smoke a cigarette a little farther away, not watch. Maybe plug your ears. Well, the good news is this is not a pristine tub. I mean, I've already had to drill some holes in it before. But yeah, we've already cut and welded a plate back there for the yeah. anti-submarining cool strap. Is, is we're, uh, we're removing evidence of some of my previous hack jobs to make the seats work in this car. Oh, yeah. The, the floor plan on the driver's side will look minty again, I think, probably when we're done. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't, I have panel bond. <laughs> Panel bond hides all. I believe when we did the, the original, um, like seat belt uh, anchor points, this thing, I'm not sure this shop existed. No, we did this outside of the shipping we did container. It the container over there. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm gonna start getting some cutting tools out. Probably get my tripod set up, and we'll do a little bit of video here as we cut.
So now, so we're gonna angle the saw now because as we come into this chassis rail here, we want it to be angled so it sticks in so I have some good area on the inside to weld that chassis brace in. Your side okay so we have our cut done down the tunnel here now it says free all the way across you want to be really careful with this cut that you don't go deep especially if like us you're leaving the car assembled while you're doing this because there is stuff back here so set your guard kind of use your guard where you can sit it against there and pivot it keep a steady hand a light cut and don't push too hard this is the only place where you really need to be really concerned about the backside of your cut. There's nothing here and there's nothing along this inner chassis rail once you get this wiring harness pulled out of the way. But back here, just take your time. Um, what are we? Maybe five minutes, 10 minutes into this project yeah, and I've got two sides of it already completely cut out. There's gonna be a little bit of work in this corner, but I'm gonna use my smaller die grinder to get in here and get that angle. This side should go pretty quick, except for when we get to the seat bracket, I might have to get my long sawzall blades but this cut is just gonna be butter again too. I've started with my sawzall down to about here. I know that I'm clear here and I'll be safe to drop the saw in, but I use the cutoff wheel to initiate that cut because I don't want to hit anything in the trans tunnel when I'm working. The exhaust is running right here and I don't wanna to have to build an exhaust today. So we're getting ready to cut through the chassis rail again on the front side, and just like the other side, but this side we actually can get more of an angle on my saw. The more angle you can put in there, the better it's gonna be for when you go to splice that lower chassis leg. And you'll see what I'm talking about as soon as we get the floor panel cut all the way out. Um, we'll pop that rail up in there and get it centered where it needs to be. And all of this inside edge, before I weld the drop floor in, will be a perfect place to weld inside and out on that chassis rail. Now, Dalen has talked about getting the Flying Miata chassis brace kit, which is a piece of plate that welds on the bottom of these inner rails to stiffen up the chassis. And I think that's something that we are gonna to do to this car in the not so distant future. I have full faith this center rail for the kit that 5X sells is more than strong enough for what we need to do. But just because it is something that we have cut and welded, I think in the long run, it'll probably be in our best interest to go ahead and reinforce these just a little bit more, just to make sure that this isn't a weak point later. Because as much as you don't ever plan for a race car, when you build a race car, you need to build everything like this thing is gonna go straight into a wall at 100. We wanna make sure that no matter how bad we wreck this car, the driver's gonna walk away from it. So take your time, make sure your cuts are good, make sure your prep is good. This isn't something to screw with. If you're not really confident in your fabricating skills, please do not try this. Those screws are about to fall off the dash and hit you. What screws? Hmm? 
screws? The box screws on top of the dash. Oh. I don't want to pick those up. ready to take the chassis brace out and I think this thing's gonna pop out of there. Uh, uh that heat shield's attached. That's part of what my problem is. I didn't see bolts for that. I think it's welded there. self-tapper in it when we're done, mount it back to the bottom. Now, if you watch the video on 5X, this brace is not here, neither is this one. They make no mentions of these at all. Now this one will have to be cut. I'm going to have to run the saw through and cut it right here because this is where the floor is going to be. We don't have a choice. So it is still tied in up here. We're going to lose a little bit of our back support on this brace. Now the brace that runs through the middle goes to the bottom of this channel. Now you see how I said we wanted this channel to be kind of laid over like this. Let me go grab that floor brace. This is the piece that's going to replace it. So that's gonna go right up in like that. And now we can weld inside and out on that brace. But before we do that, I'm going to cut the rest of this bracket off and push that in. And we're going to make our first test fit 
on the drop floor. I said, that brace we have to cut there, that still has five bolts, I believe, tied in other places of the car. So it's still quite a bit of sport with that corner removed. And I believe the reason they didn't mention it in their video is... Their car wasn't good at shell, it looked like. That they also, I believe that was an NA. Ah. If I remember correctly, uh, not, NAs and Bs are mostly the same tub, but the NBs, especially this one being an NB2 as the 2 model, they added quite a few chassis braces. So... Not all the cars even have those braces. Also, I think most of the cars that get this kind of treatment are full cage race cars. Yeah. So this kind of, that bracing under the chassis is less important, I believe. Okay, well, I think we're gonna just get this knocked off real quick with the saw, just so I've got room to get in here. And then uh, we'll bring you guys back when we do our first drop into the drop floor. All right, so we've got the drop floor set in here. Now on, 5x's video and all that they said that you're going to have some clearance here where you're going to have to be able to get this to pull into there but the way they recommend doing that is uh, they used a hammer and dolly and a few other things to pull it out i'm going to drill these like they said we're going to use uh, some self-tapping screws and worst case i think i'm going to send dalen underneath the car right here with a pry bar to bring it out as i put a couple self-tappers in it just to hold it together now those are going to come back out when we're done but we're going to do those to hold it in when it goes the other thing though, well, I've got it in here now, is I need to make some good marks. Uh, I guess I already know there where I need to go. Where this thing ends here, so I can come through here and start taking all the paint off the floor. And then mark there, mark there, there. I'll do one there, one over here. Oh, you guys can't even see what I'm doing. We're gonna put a couple marks in here, some spots where we're gonna pre-drill some holes for our self-tappers to hold this in when we start fabricating. <sighs> Welding all this stuff in there. So that's done. I got a little bit of bending and a little more cleanup work I need to do, but I've had hardly any work needed to be done since we made the initial cut in the floor to put this in there. So we'll pull this out. I'll switch discs on my grinder. We'll get all this paint knocked off here. We'll get the bottom chassis rail in place. I'm gonna do the same marks so I can get that all cleaned up and ready to, uh, to weld it in. And then I'm gonna set Dalen loose on pre-drilling a few of these holes so we can come back through and use some self-tappers just to get it started in place. So we have the chassis rail held in. It's got a self-tapper going through it on either end. Now to put this in, you have to have the drop floor in because you need to make sure that these notches here are gonna be in the right, right spot so you can actually weld them to your floor kit because otherwise you're gonna have problems. So that's there. I'm gonna do a little bit of cleanup in here. We're gonna weld the inside of these rails and then I'm gonna hop underneath. We're gonna weld the outside and then I think it's gonna be lunch time. But I think so far we're two hours into the project once we had the interior out because we took the interior out of the car last night preemptively. But got all the paint off. These type of discs work amazing for getting like that uh, rubberized undercoating and stuff like that off. Now we got as much of it as we could cleaned out of here, so we're going to be able to weld all of our flat sections of metal. But for the rest of it, I actually do have metal bonding compound, like the stuff that you put firewalls and stuff in with. So when we're done, when we get it welded, we're going to go over that across the rest of it, just to make sure that everything's sealed up and we're not going to get moisture or anything through there. But uh, now it's time to go roll the welder over. And we'll start burning it in.
scares the hell out of me. I'll, I'll run one day, 300 miles, check it, check it out. Next day, I'll check it, and I can move it. And the mouth's not changing. Because, uh, can you shine this across like that for me? Any French fries down there? None. <laughs> Turbo was disappointed. Yes, yes, he was. He's been fishing the back of the Probably do another one across the bottom right there. So, got it welded in on the inside. Not exactly the prettiest across the bottom because the floor wasn't straight there. So I did a few passes through it. But you can see by the outside there, it definitely came in well. And I'm not as worried about the inside welds here. We're gonna make sure our outside welds look really good. But I'm confident that those are gonna hold no problem. Not the best welder by far, but I think for what we have here, it's gonna be more than fine. So now I get to do the unfun part of laying on my back under the car and we're gonna weld the end of these into the rails too. Okay, we've got our drop floor kit sat in the car now that we've got the frame welded inside and out on the bottom. Before we put it in though, make sure you weld in your plate for your seat belt anchors. Dalen, do you have another one of those? We can show them what they look like. Yeah. So that's not completely welded, not actually necessary. So when you see these plates, that, that weld there will be more than enough to hold that anchor point in because these things will have to rip completely through the chassis. Now, we are going to use metal bonding uh, adhesive over that. I believe it's TA1B. It's a Ford part. But we're going to use that on all of our seams, and I'm going to go ahead and cover that just to make sure we don't get moisture between the two plates or anything like that. Um, Self-tapper screws all the way through to pull the metal together and get everything where it's sitting pretty happy. And I think we're going to start stitch welding this thing in here. Really not too bad. You got to do a little bit of massaging on this inside corner here to get the inside corner to fit up right. But really, the, the whole thing is welding really good. That's ah, a little smaller one. That's the one the kit comes with. Yeah. So that's what the kit comes with, and these are the ones we use. So that big plate is right behind there. So to pull the seat belt through, you'd have to break the floor out all the way around there. Which I don't think is going to happen. This one, nothing wrong with this versus this one. I I feel safer knowing that this is what we're running than this. Well, I think we got a little more work to do, but that floor is just about welded in. 
I'm gonna try to do a little more maybe on the back side of that center brace, but it's really hard to get under the center of the car right now. If I have to, I can weld that later once we get that up higher because we are gonna undercoat the entire thing when we're done, but got it tied in on all four sides. We have a brace running through the end. It is tied to the frame rails securely, and this thing is, doesn't even make noise when you hit it. So I'm pretty happy. So we'll just do a little more touch-up work on this, and then it's time to get panel bond. Well, we just did our test in here. Got a few more things to do, but the floor is in. The seat is mounted, and Dalen fits in here a lot better. A lot lower in the car. What do you think? Do you like your driving position more now? A lot better, yeah. Somehow, too, Dalen is taller than me by a few inches. I fit in this thing perfectly with the seat pad. He takes the pad out when he races, so he sits a little lower in that seat. But with the pad in, I actually fit in this thing really well, and that seat is not adjustable. Those mounts are welded, and that thing is bolted to the mounts that are welded to the chassis rails. So this thing is tied in to the floor pan and to those rails that we welded under the car. So we got the seat in, got all the harnesses in. We've got it set so Dalen sits in there. The harnesses are set perfectly for him. We're getting ready to take the car and back it out of the shop here. And we're going to do a couple of practice runs of Dalen getting out of the car with helmet on as if there was an incident. If the car was an accident or a fire or something. He wants to do a couple quick runs just to try to familiarize himself with exiting the car now that the seat's low. He's got his harnesses to worry about and all that stuff. So we're going to do a couple quick runs with that, but we're going to back the car out of the shop because I feel like for anyone egressing this car in a hurry, you're going to end up on the ground. The quickest way out is probably going to be to, to roll yourself out of the car, but we'll see. It should be fun. We'll, we'll try that here in a minute. Oh fuck, you hit something. Get the fuck out, it's on fire. That actually wasn't that bad.